In the previous example, we were able to figure out what statements were true and what statements were false relatively quickly. But as we get to ever more complicated statements, we want to have some methodology to keep track of which statements are true and which statements are going to be false. And we're going to be using something referred to as a truth table to help us keep track of them. So here's the idea. In my truth table, I'm going to put up at the top a bunch of different things that I'm going to have a range of possibilities as whether they're true and false. For instance, the first I'm going to do is a table for negation. And in this statement, I'm going to put a statement P and a statement not P. So the way a truth table works is that on the left hand side here, I'm going to put my variable P. P might be either true or false, I don't know. But then on the right hand side, I'm going to write my sort of outcome, my sort of like combined statement. In this case, it's not P, it's negation. And then the truth or falseness of not P, it depends on the truth or falseness of P. Well, it could be that this is going to be true, and it could be that this is going to be false. Those are my two different possibilities for my statement P. But now that I have those, I can fill out the rest of it. Because if my statement P is true, then negating that statement must be false. And if my statement is false, then negating that must be true. So for example, back when P was my shirt is blue, sometimes I wear a blue shirt, sometimes I don't. So when I wear a blue shirt, if I negate that, I'm always going to have the answer that this is false. So for instance, in the statement P being I'm wearing a blue shirt, if I say that I'm wearing a blue shirt is true, then the not P, which is the claim I'm not wearing a blue shirt, is necessarily false. I don't always wear blue shirts. Maybe tomorrow I'm not going to wear a blue shirt. In which case, the statement I'm wearing a blue shirt will be false. And the statement that I am not wearing a blue shirt would be true. All right, so let's look at one of the other ones. I'm going to do conjunction next. Conjunction is my fancy word for and. So now if I want to fill in this table, in the first case, there was only going to be just two different columns, one for P and one for this output. But for conjunction, it's P and Q. So I want to have two different possible inputs. I have my P, and then I also have my Q. And then my output here is going to be P and Q. Now, in this scenario, I have four different rows. And the reason why I have four rows here is that there's more possibilities for the truth and falseness of P and Q, respectively. In the first example, there's only one variable. It could either be true or false. But here I have a whole bunch of different possibilities. For example, I could have that my P statement was true, but then my Q would also have the possibility of either being true or false. So I'm going to say that I have it true and true for both of them. However, I could also have that my P was true and then my Q was going to be false. I could have it that my P was going to be false and my Q was going to be true. And the final possibility is it could be false for both of them. All right, so these are my inputs. This is the possible truth and falseness of P and Q. Now I want to look at P and Q. In other words, I want to have both of these things being true. That's what it means to say and. I want one thing and the other being true. So if either of them is false, for example, this one is false, Q is here, uh, P is false here, they're both false here, in all of these three cases, you don't have both of them being true. So to fill in this table, what I'm going to have is true, true, then both of them are true, yes. But down here, one of them is false, one of them is false, and in this case, both of them are false, and so I fill in my table like that. Final one we want to look at, we want to look at the OR table. So how are we going to do this? It is now very similar to conjunction, where I've got some P, some Q, but now I write it as P or Q. Now, here, the inputs are precisely the same, right? There's nothing changed there. I've got the same rate of possibilities for my P and for my Q. So I can have a true and a true, a true and a false, 
a false and a true, and a false and a false. And then the statement or means one of the things needs to be true or the other one, but it doesn't matter which. So in this case, it turns out that both of them are true. So it certainly has the case that one or the other is true. So this is going to be true. In the second scenario, one of them is true, one of them is false. But if the statement is the one thing or the other, well, one of them is true, so that's going to be true. Here, false and true, well, one of them is true, so it's going to be true again. And finally, false and false, now neither of them true. So it's not the case that one or the other of them is true, and so this is going to be false. So these are truth tables, and they allow us to capture these various statements in a really, really nice and convenient way.